Hello everyone and welcome to Production Lab. This is Dom and in this video I'm going to show you how to create huge 808 kick drums and sub basses using only FM synthesis. I'm going to show you why FM synthesis is probably the best way to create 808s because it gives you all the flexibility and the control that you want for your kick drums and your sub basses. So without any further ado, let's get started. There are many ways that you can create 808 kick drums and sub basses. Some people like to use samples, some people like to use subtractive synthesis. In my opinion, one of the most effective ways to create 808 kick drums and sub basses is by using FM synthesis. And this is because FM synthesis gives us total control over the entire spectrum of our kick drum, over our subs. We can have different layers for our knock, for our attack, and also for the harmonics. And FM synthesis gives us the ability to have our 808s cut through a busy mix, even without adding any distortion or saturation. So let me show you how I built this 808 kick drum here, which is basically a sub bass and a kick drum together. And just so that we can see the harmonics, I also have the supervision from Cubase so that we can check our frequencies. Now in this example, I'm going to use FM Lab and you can use FM Lab in Halion 7 or you can use it in Halion Sonic 7. And I built this 808 entirely from scratch using FM synthesis, no samples, no subtractive synthesis. Now, if you want to start creating your own presets in FM Lab from scratch, it's very easy. Let me show you how to do this. You go to the Halion hub, select single instrument, and then you go to FM Lab, you make sure that all presets are displayed here. And then all you need to do is double click on the initial FM Lab preset. And off we go. As you probably know, FM Lab and the FM Zone in Halion 7 allow us to create our own unique algorithms. In this case, I'm using a custom algorithm that I've designed. So let me break it down and let me explain the actual method that I used to create this 808. So I'm going to turn down all the operators first. And now we have no sound, of course. Now I'm going to go to my FM oscillator page and we're going to start with operator eight. Now I'm going to just bring up operator eight around here. And as you can see, I'm modulating this operator with operator seven and operator five. It doesn't matter that I'm not using six because like I said, this is freely configurable. So let's go to our oscillator page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this down so I can show you how I've built this 808. So now we only have operator eight working and these are at zero level. So let's hear how this sounds. Now, if you're not wearing headphones or if you're not listening through some studio monitors, you might not be hearing anything. And this is because right now, as you can see, I have a sine wave at 41 Hertz. And the higher I go, we are at 73. So it's a very, very low frequency. And this is our sub territory. And we absolutely want that. We want the subs for a big 808 sound. Now, one thing that I want to take care of straight away is our attack. I want my 808 to hit hard when I play the first note. And in order to do this, I'm going to start by going to my pitch page and now I'm going to create an envelope here. As you can see, I have a pitch envelope and I'm going to activate my waveform here so I can see what's going on. And now I'm going to activate this envelope by turning up the amount. So what's going on here? We are creating this pitch envelope. So the very, very beginning of the note is going to have a higher pitch. So we will perceive this as an attack, as a transient. So all of a sudden now our 808 is punchy. And I can exaggerate a little bit. 
but I think for my needs, I'm going to keep it around here. The one thing that we're missing already is that this is just a sub frequency, so we can't hear any harmonics. So this will not cut through small speakers like smartphones or smaller reproduction systems like laptops, for example. So what I can do to help with this is I can go to my oscillator page and I'm going to modulate this operator eight with operator seven. And I'm going to show you how I connected those. It's right here, as you can see. This is zero, so I'm not modulating it with operator seven. And now I'm going to turn this up and I'm going to play by ear and see how many harmonics I want to add. And I'm going to check out my supervision meter here and let's try it. So you will see that already I'm adding quite a few harmonics there that will help this bass cut through the mix. I haven't added any saturation, any distortion. And you will see that compared to operator eight, which is course 0.5, operator seven, we have course of one. So it's one octave higher. Now, at this stage, I don't want to go too, too far with this because what's going to happen is we're going to lose the fundamental here. So I want to keep the fundamental nice and strong. Now, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to modulate operator eight with modulator five as well. Let's go back to our algorithm page here and you will see that now I'm also connecting operator eight to operator five. Let's go and turn this up a little bit. So this is great. Now I've added quite a few harmonics. One detail that you might want to take care of, if you want your 808 to have a glide. See, I'm not triggering the attack every single time if I play legato, so I have the notes connected. So all I need to do is go to my voice here and make sure I turn this to mono. I make sure that the re-trigger is off and the re-trigger mode is set to legato. I also want to make sure that glide is on and I also set up my pitch band so that I have a nice octave up and down interval so I can do stuff like this. I've taken care of the basis of my 808. Now what I want to do is I want to start adding layers and this is where the real power of FM synthesis comes to play because FM synthesis gives you the option to have several layers without sacrificing anything. Where in subtractive synthesis, you have a very rich waveform and you take away frequencies using filters, you have limited control over what you can do with the attack and the punch portion of your kick drums. So let's go to my algorithm here and I'm going to turn operator eight off. So I'm going to press shift and now I get nothing. So this is a nice shortcut. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring operator six to the game. So I'm going to turn this up. And as you can hear, this operator, this acts like my punch layer, my knock layer. So if I go here and go back to my operators here, you will see that what I have with operator six is an operator that's fixed to a frequency of 100 hertz. So no matter what I play on the keyboard, it's going to stay the same. And this is still a sine wave, but with a very short decay time. So let me show you. And now I have my knock portion of the 808. So this is the attack of my kick drum, so to say. Now, if I go and activate operator eight as well, I 
I can combine these two carriers and now I have both my sub and my punch right there. Now, one great tip if you want to have a cleaner attack is to go to your modulators. For example, my modulator seven here that modulates operator eight and I can give it a little bit of a slower attack. So pay attention to these harmonics. So you will see that these harmonics take a little time to come in and this leaves a little bit of room for my punch to go through. But I'm going to show you another way that you can do this that's a little bit more effective later on. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to my algorithm. I've taken care of my meat. I've taken care of the body of my 808 with operator eight, and then my knock is on operator six. I'm only using sine waves up to this point. I'm going to turn everything off. Now let's go ahead and activate another layer. I have operator four here. Let's bring it up. And now we're only listening to this operator. And what I'm doing here is I'm modulating operator four with operator three. So let's go back to our oscillator page. And as you can see with operator four, we have again a very short attack. And then I modulate it with operator three. And let's see what happens when I turn operator three up. So this is a higher element. This is in the high mid range. This will give me an even more pronounced attack for my 808. So let's activate everything by pressing shift. Let's listen to all of these one by one. Let's bring up our body with operator eight, then our knock with operator five, our higher knock with operator four. And now what I'm gonna do, is I want to enhance this low end a little bit more. I want to add a little bit more sub to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add operator two on its own, which is just a sine wave. Let's listen to it in isolation by holding command or control and let's bring it up. And you will see this is just a sine wave again. And I want to add this in order to enhance my subs because I added a few harmonics here. So I want to make sure that we have this sub layer a little bit reinforced without adding any sub harmonic synthesizers later on or any enhancement plugins. And now let's try. Yes. And last but not least, I'm going to add operator one that also has a feedback loop. And please observe my feedback here is all the way up. So when I turn this feedback all the way up here, then essentially what I'm getting is noise. So let me turn up the feedback so that you can hear how it sounds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the click of my 808. So I'm going to go here to my oscillator page and I'm going to make sure that this is very, very short. And this is more than enough for what I need. So now let's make sure that we can hear everything. So this is why FM synthesis is so powerful because we can have a multi-layered sound using just one synthesizer. So we have the body of our 808, the knock, a mid-range attack, a sub enhancement and a click all in one place and I can play with them and fine tune them exactly how I want. Now, if you check the wave scope that I have here, you will see that I have a nice attack and then a very deep tail. Now, all I need to do is add the icing on the cake. And in this case, I'm going to make sure that I give this sound a little bit of movement. And for this, I'm going to use the user envelope in this configuration. 
and I'm going to assign this envelope to my mod levels. And the only thing I need to do is drag and drop this to my mod levels. And what this is going to do is it's going to affect the envelope, the level of all the modulators. In this case, operator seven, operator five and operator three. So let's add a little bit of depth. And now I have a sound that evolves. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my effects here and add a little bit of compression. And a tiny bit of distortion. And with the FM Lab and the FM Zone in Halion 7, I have total control over my mod times, my carrier times, and my modulator levels. So for example, if I want to change the sound of my 808, it's very easy to do. So there you go, that's how you create huge sounding 808 kick drums and sub basses using FM synthesis, using FM Lab and the FM Zone in Hylion 7. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more music production tutorials and sound design tips and tricks and much more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.